Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, if you have a lathe in your shop, in your garage, in your future, uh, sooner or later you're going to hear someone say, when you single point thread, you need to set your compound at 29 and a half or 30 degrees. Followed immediately by, this allows only the left side of the tool to cut as you're cutting towards the chuck or the collet or the work holding device. If that is true and you think about that statement, only the left side of the tool cuts, well then why do you even need the right side of the tool? And that's exactly what I plan to demonstrate today. I am going to take a 60 degree threading tool, I'm going to split it down the center and remove the right hand side, and I'm going to try to run a 60 degree thread with it. Can you cut a 60 degree notch with only half of a 60 degree tool? Yes you can. It's very conditional based on the fact that your carriage is stationary and the compound is what's moving. Now flip side of that, that's not how you run a thread. A thread is run with an incremental movement of your compound and the carriage is moving. If the right side of the tool in fact doesn't cut, and I'm going to prove today that it does, the 30 degree tool, the 60 degree tool with half of it removed, is going to leave a stair step on the right hand face of the thread. You can cut a perfect 60 degree groove, but the carriage can't be moving while you're doing it. For everybody out there that's going to start splitting hairs, I'm going to say, I agree with you 100%. Yes, you can cut a 60 degree thread with only half of the tool cutting, but the incremental moves of the compound would be so small that it would take you all day to run an eight pitch thread because the advancement of the compound would have to be half a thousandth or less in order to form or leave a smooth surface on that side of the tool, which is straight or non-existent. Anyway, let's take a walk over to the lathe. I'm going to put a piece of brass in. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm saying. I uh, will demonstrate the V groove at 60 degrees with a 30 degree tool, and I will show you the failure of the right side of the tool not to cut. So next time you hear somebody say, set your compound at 30, only the left side cuts, tell them that they're wrong, point them at this video, Enough said. Let's take a walk. The tool in frame right now is a 60 degree threading tool. It's a top notch can of metal insert. I know it's coated, it shouldn't be coated for brass, but let's take a look at what you can do with this tool. Not only is it a threading tool, but it can create grooves like we have right there. Now let's just do one real quick just to show you. That is considered a plunge cut. I am now moving the carriage to give it the width. But there you go. You can also do that with a form tool with a flat on the front, exactly the same width as the flat that I just did. And conventionally, that's how a threading tool works. It works by creating a 60 degree notch. Now I'm gonna put a tool in here that only has one side. This is the tool that I'm going to use for the second half of the demonstration. This is a 60 degree pointed tool with half of it removed. So the little slight back rake on the right hand side is just for clearance. The left side profile is 30 degrees. And if the myth of advancing the compound at 30 degrees is in fact true, this should cut a good thread. I'm going to tell you right now it's not going to, but let's put that myth to bed and prove it. This is a seriously ugly hand ground high speed steel tool. There you go. 30 degrees on one side, about negative five on the other side. What happens if you plunge it straight in? Well, you're going to get a straight side on one side and 30 degrees on the other side. Let's do it.
right on one side, 30 degrees on the other side. Now let's do the exact same thing using the compound to drive this tool in. I'm going to back the tool off with the compound. And this, in fact, is the theory behind only needing one side of the tool to thread. But this is a conical cut. Let's see what happens. That is a cross slide movement right there until they make contact. Now I'm going to dial it in with the cross with the compound. Look at the groove. 60 degrees all day long. This is the logic behind only needing one side of the tool to run a thread. So you've just seen nearly identical grooves cut with completely different shaped tools. But will that work when it's a helix? I doubt it. Let's find out. My compound is currently set on zero. I wish I had another camera here I could shoot that, but I'm in the middle of something, so that's a new. I am going to move this tool in until it touches this material, and then I'm going to go 160 on my cross slide, which is 80 per side. Okay? contact I'm going to back the compound out now so I can make my cross slide adjustment compound coming off now let's go 160 deep on the cross slide 80 per side When this compound comes back to zero, the tip of that tool will be 80 thousandths of an inch into the part. I'm going to slow the RPM down, engage the feed, and let's see if we get a nice clean 60 degree profile using, theoretically, just the leading edge of the tool. I'm going to suggest that this is going to be catastrophically horrible. I'm going to take five passes at 20 thousandths deep each pass. Coming up on the finish pass, I think you can see what's going on and it's not pretty. Take a dead patch just to clean it up. All right, there you go. The 
leading edge of that tool cut absolutely beautifully. The back side of the tool is leaving deep ridges. You can see the steps in there. Back here you can see the steps. You can see the incremental cuts. You could probably get a smooth finish if you wanted to take a hundred passes at maybe a thousandth at a time. You would get the same basic activity or productivity out of the tool as we did here when we single pointed this in. But you can't do it with a thread. You need both sides of the tool for a thread. Now for all you old guys out there that are going to say, well, when you're doing that, make sure the final cut is a cross slide cut. Let's do that just to keep you happy. I'm going to take another five off of that using the cross slide only. down here on the chip tray underneath Put a piece of reflective material down there lock out the light from the top you can see the steps from the cut you absolutely need the right hand side of the tool the right hand side of the tool does cut it doesn't cut as much as the left hand side of the tool but threading is a form tool operation anybody that tells you only the leading edge of the tool is good doing the work is misinformed. Enough said. Just to compare apples to apples, let's do the threading tool the exact same way as I just did with the half tool. Full profile, using the compound only. The compound is currently set on zero. I'll make the contact and go 160 deep. sweep so I have a place to land. Actual speed on this is 235 RPM but the threading dial is set for 8 threads per inch so it is really smoking right now. Alright, well we have a depth target. I'm going to back off the compound right now. Let's get out to a starting point out here. Sure. five passes as well. Done with the compound, night and day difference. Full profile tool. Profile of the tool does cut on the other side. It wipes off all the ridges that would normally be formed by an incomplete tool. And only the left side and the tip at the depth of cut will cut per pass set at 30 degrees. But yes, both sides of the tool cut. Absolutely. All day long. Enough said.